It's Tuesday, which means a new episode of No Filter. No Filter Tuesdays. I am so looking forward to this guest today. To welcome my new guest, who's been a friend of mine for decades. He's a Grammy winning, Oscar nominated musician, producer, performer. Here's some of the artists that he has produced. Justin Timberlake, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Kanye West, Ed Sheeran, Nicki Minaj, Ben Stefani, Britney Spears, Jennifer Lopez, Frank Ocean, Usher, Sean P. Diddy Combs, and Snoop Dogg. That's just a few. <laughs> He's also a fashion designer and a fashion icon. But let me tell you something. He has the most beautiful skin. He has the best complexion of a man of any man that I know. And he's launching a new men's grooming line for all mankind. I can't wait to ask him about that. I can't wait to know who influenced him. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one and the only, my chosen family, Pharrell Williams. Hi. How are you? I'm all right, my love. How are you? I'm good, man. Blessed, grateful. Look at your skin. Thank you. Just look at Listen, it. Listen, you know, I, I, I learned, I learned, I learned, you know, from you. You used to tell me all the time about the importance of like cold water. You know. You're never gonna age. You're never gonna age. <laughs> You know I'm 50, right? I'm up there. That's crazy. That's crazy. Well, congratulations. You don't look at, you know, you know, we're near it. It's the spirit that keeps you young more than anything else. You're right about that. You're absolutely right. I don't feel 50. What is 50 meant to feel like? You know what I mean? I just feel comfortable in my skin is all I can feel. Now, for mm -hmm. I try to remember, where was the first time we ever met? I try to remember where exactly. I recall it, recollect a recording studio. Do you remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, that, that, was the, that was the first time we met though? Was it? I, I think so. I think it was the Hit Factory actually, to be honest. But what I remember the most, I know I was very shy and I, and I just listened to the music. I was like, oh my God. And your hat, you had on your yellow hat, which you gave to me much many months later but i know yeah. what i remember the most of that night besides the incredible music was you loved jewelry stones beautiful yeah. stones you still love stones thank you i do i do um i you know what it is i appreciate them i just think my taste and my my taste and like my, my standards are you know, when you have children, you start to think about things differently. So mm -hmm. I still have a great appreciation for stones. I'm just, just, but you know, I'm always looking for things that like, you know. Well, now daddy can save them now. for his daughters. <laughs> That's right. They can be saved for the babies. So let me start from the beginning because we always say that here on No Filter. Where were you born or where did you grow up? So I was born in um, in Norfolk, Virginia. I was raised in Virginia Beach, Virginia. That's you know in the seven cities of uh, area of of the state of Virginia. And you had brothers and sisters. How many in your family? We have a big family. I have two brothers, and then I have uh, uh, two half brothers and two half sisters. Was it a fun house, a lively house, a lot going on? Yeah, just always at my grandmother's house, you know. Oh, is it your grandmother's? I was. Uh, well, I remember you. Huh? You always have very good manners. Is that who taught you all your manners? Your grandmother. Your. You've always been very well mannered. Uh, I had to grow into that. I think when I was young, I was like, you know, obviously defiant, like any other kid, um, and I was incredibly lazy. I I didn't stop being lazy until I found something that. I love to do all the time. And that's when I 
it was the it went from one end of the spectrum to the other. You know, that's when it was just like workaholic. So I found something that I loved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish that for all kids. All developing <laughs> minds, like I wish that for them. With developing minds. So as a child growing up, you had many different jobs before you got to the point of knowing that music was your calling and going into the arts. Some of the jobs you had, McDonald's. What was your adolescent life like? I wasn't the best employee. You know, I got fired every time from my McDonald's jobs. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't very driven work-wise in my teen, teen years. I wasn't thinking like that. I was just thinking about like hanging out with my friends and yeah, music just became so much more fun to do. So that's just what we did all the time. And so then it, then it, you know, it's like you're getting in all those work hours, but that wasn't my focus. You know, that it, it was just something we loved so much. What age were you when you felt, when you really, like you're saying right now, that you really loved music so much? What age were you when you really knew that this was your calling? Well, that's two questions basically, because I think since yeah. I can remember anything, music has always been this really, you know, huge thing, huge aspect to how I just looked at life, period, you know? Mm -hmm. Because it was what you, it's what you're hearing when you're, when you're like in that world, it's like what you're hearing, right. you know? So I think music is like a soundtrack to all of our lives, right? Like you remember the summers, you think about what songs you're playing, what time of day it was, where you were, and how you felt. But then the other aspect of your question is when I realized it was my calling, um, it took me a long time to see that. I think I just mainly just worked. I loved working so much that I think it was looking over my shoulder going, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, okay, like, I think I'm, I'm supposed to do this. Mm. Now, I remember many times where you were yeah. just, I mean, you were, you were not really sleeping. You were like on that plane to the next place, then back again. I just, for I remember, I think, so 2003, <laughs> that every time you had the radio on, whether it be KISS FM or WBS or 97.5, it was the majority of songs played of hits, like seven out of 10 of them were yours. How did that feel? You never get used to that. There's always a feeling you walk into you know, a venue or a restaurant and you hear your song. I, I still feel that way today. Yeah. Except I get a little bit more embarrassed. Embarrassed? Because, Why? Yeah, because whatever I was doing to, to make that sound out or to make those words come out, uh, is it, it, a lot of energy in that. So when I hear that, I can only picture myself doing that and then I feel on the spot. Cause I might like, a lot of times I, I might not like the stuff that I do a couple of years later, you know? I might not want to hear it. It just depends, that happens where you just like, ah, I don't want to hear that, you know? But that's also because I lean forward a lot. Like I like, I like, I like to look forward. I like what I haven't done yet. That's, those are the things that, that still interest me. Unknown. Uh, now, you did you go to boot camp or band camp? <laughs> band camp. <laughs> I, I went to um, band camp. Yeah, every year. And that's where that you was read like, Chad. Yep. Yep. In the seventh grade. And still friends till this day. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's my brother. I, mean, I think I still have my hat for out. I have my hat. 
I'm that. sure you do. I mean, you have you have one of the most amazing, you know, archived uh, wardrobes I've ever seen. I mean, it's the most robust. I mean, you know, it is so full on like, like a company. I was so blown <laughs> away when I saw that. Yeah. I'm going to show it one day soon. I'm ready to let them come in and go through what they think they were museum worthy. And I'm ready to share my journey through my clothes. One of the things I do remember also is there's a footage of me walking down the show, Victoria's Secrets, and you, Puff, Denzel, there was one other, I don't know who the one other was, all four of you were together. <laughs> so far. I see when I look at that footage, I just see the three the four of you there. It just what do you feel was your big break? Music speaks for itself, but like what do you think was the break that got you to this producer that everybody wanted to work with? Oh, I think it's I think it's all a part of the constellation. It's all, you know, every it's not just one thing, because one thing takes you to the next thing and takes you to the next thing. And I think that was but just there getting has a break. To have been with, a sound, you know, a sound that Jay heard that said, I want to work with him. I want to work with him. everybody, because that's what it was. I remember I was around that time and it was just like, I don't know how you even slept. I don't even know if there was enough time in a day. At that time, it was just trying to, you know, it's our whole thing was just trying to find things that like, uh, you know, sounds people weren't using necessarily and make them feel very familiar. You know, every every song led to another song, every song, and that song led to another song. And it just, I don't know, I kind of look at them all the same way. Not all the songs, but I mean, there's like yeah. a lot of those moments that I think you're talking about. Like I look at each, la each, each and every one of those like moments, like, they're Britney like these Spears, boosts slave, of like momentum. I'm a slave for you, love. That's a that was a vibe. That was a moment in time. Drop it like it's that hard. definitely a was moment a moment in time. time. Yeah, crazy. It must be amazing crazy. to be able to have a life to look at your life journey through music, and I think that's just incredible. I don't really look back as much. I'm not really good at that. Because I'm, I'm too judgmental, I'm like, man, I should have done this. I should have changed that snare. I blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm that person, so I don't like, I don't look back too much. Mm -hmm. And it's also really intimidating and incredibly humbling how many opportunities God gave me. Um, and so that always blows me away. So I, 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 I cower um, when it comes to looking, yeah, looking yeah, yeah. at. Yeah, yeah, I do. God has given you many opportunities in many different spheres. Let's touch on the fashion. Your first fashion okay. that the public we got. Would I be would that would I be right in saying that was Billionaire's Boys Club? Yeah, yeah. That was Nigo and I. Uh we had Billionaire Boys Club together and also ice cream. And at the time he also he had created Bape, he had founded the company Bape. Uh, he no longer has it or is affiliated with them. We're, we're all human made now. So it's human made and human race. That was a crazy, crazy time. Streetwear was just, Ahead of its that's time, when that word like. became a word. Yeah, yeah. But, but now also, it's taking over, you know. Ugh. Deal with Billionaire's Boys Club. You've always had an essence of the Asian influence of Japan, of Korea. Mm -hmm. I felt that, I mean, yeah. it's like when we heard of it, even though we know you to be an American, it seems like it was coming from Japan, which made it more sought after, like right. we have to have it. Right. Marketing was great. Um, oh, but thank you. I mean, Tokyo has always had like this really like profound effect on me the way that I do things, the way I think about things, like Tokyo definitely made me like rethink things. You know, growing up, you know, just skateboarding has always, you know, gave me my lens in the very beginning. Um, but then when I, you know, hit my 20s and went out to Japan and saw that, it was like, oh, okay. That added like another layer to just my point of view. Yeah, Asia is amazing. It really is. I know. I agree with you. Love it. 
When was the last time you ever got on a skateboard? Uh, with my son. You know, we'll, we'll push around a little bit, but it's been a minute. You know, I, I fell, you know, off my dirt bike and fucked my shoulder up, so I had to chill. Yeah. So I hadn't been able to be, you know, get back on my board, but all of my boys, like, they train. They train. So that's... Oh, your cherubs. Yeah. So now that we're talking about fashion, life. and we're going to get to your beautiful angels, because okay. you've got four beautiful angels. I've only met one. Okay. The first one, and he is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Your style for me, okay. since I've known you, it's not complicated, but it's your style, which is hard to. It's a hard effect to achieve. Right. Think about it. Well, um, it's your hat. It's your t-shirt. Then it became your cut up short. Your pants cut short. But it's it's your it's your signature. But we, you dissect it. It's not, it's not, it's not brain surgery. But it's your style, and it's transcended and gone right. all the way through from where we were, Louis Vuitton, Marc Jacobs when Marc was there, and then you stayed yeah. at Louis Vuitton. You designed a jewelry line. Do people know this? That you designed a jewelry line for Vuitton, and not just one season, many seasons. I remember your jewelry <laughs> line, and then you went on to. I mean, way before Chanel, because some of the young folk just think you just started at Chanel. Let me tell you, he started at Louis Vuitton first. And I just, <laughs> it's just transcended. I mean, you're the first man. I was working for Chanel since, I'm, since 1986, and I've never seen any male man or anything man for a man made by Chanel, except you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really that's a big deal in my world how yeah. does all the fashion world feel for you and all the achievements that you've done with LVMH from making jewelry to working with Karl Lagerfeld may he rest in peace how has all that been it's been amazing um just because I felt like I learned a lot and I was able to also contribute um as you said with many different brands and partnerships, collaborations, and um, it's just been incredibly enlightening to be, you know, um, to work uh, alongside of, you know, a lot of giants and greats and, you know, visionaries, luminaries, and, you know, watching them all continue to uh, be responsible for which way the wind the wind will blow trend wise. You know what I'm saying? Like these are the people who are like, you know, nine months ahead, whatever's in their mind is coming out on paper. Like you're going to see that nine months from now and that will be which way the wind will be blowing, you know? So that was like, a, it was an honor to be able to, it was an honor to be able to work, you know, in that space. And what a lot of people don't realize is that you were very instrumental in a lot of it. You're very helpful with Mark, um, and you introduced uh, me to our dear friends, the New Houses. Oh my God! Um, yeah, I forgot that. You're a chameleon. You don't wear many hats, and you do wear many hats. And not only that, you respect the workmanship that goes on behind. Not that you just want to come and slap your name on it. You want to be involved with it from the process which a lot of people don't get involved that way. They just won't be like, okay, do it. Yes, no, put my name on it. But that is not you. Yeah. I can say that. I can testify to that. I've seen that. You really do. You go into the atelier. You want to see the, the people working in the atelier. You want to know the fabric. You want to know from A to Z, which is why I feel that, you know, I can open the doors, but you made your own relationships and you made that work that way because I think that that's a natural thing of who you are. You know, well, I enjoy the process, you know, exactly. the opportunity is a blessing. And so if you really appreciate it, then you're going to like cherish every aspect um, of enlightenment, you know, at the chance of enlightenment. The other thing I want to say, too, before I forget is, you know, um, Gwen and I have a song called Holler Back. And that chorus came from a conversation 
when you were like telling somebody, you were telling you were telling somebody you ain't no holler back girl because of the song that we had with Fabulous at the time called Holler Back. And the song with Holler Back Young and Who Who. We were like, you told somebody, because somebody was like trying to speak to you or whatever. You was like, I'm sorry, I have a name, like I'm not no holler back girl. And I thought that was so amazing. And that ended up being the chorus to you know, um, no holler back girl for fun. Oh my God. I don't know who I was talking yeah. to. I guess they deserved it. Oh my yeah. goodness. Now, let's yeah. go on into, I think I want to go on into skin because since I've known Pharrell, he, you have also always been obsessed with skin since I've known you. As much as it was music, mm -hmm. it was also skin. You've always taken <laughs> care of your face. You've always wanted to know what's the best thing to put on your face. So it's no surprise to me to hear when you announced that you had done a skincare line. It made complete sense. Thank How you. did that come about? Thank Finally, you, when did you say, let me just do my own? Well, you know what? Uh, when you and I first met, I used to hound you about your skin and you know, you gave me a couple tips and uh, I was like, okay, I get it. But then I realized that if I just put a little focus on, you know, just what it was that I was doing every day routine, which is the, you know, that's the most, that's really the most you can do is be be diligent and be consistent. I, f I found it like, that's not really let me down. So then that and like a really amazing dermatologist who is, uh, out of New York, her name is uh, Dr. Elena Jones, African American woman, really, 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 really talented. Um, she also just educated me is, too. Our skin is very sensitive, and we we can mark so yeah. easily. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And you just gotta know. You gotta know what you're gonna do in every instance. You know. And everybody thinks, oh no, you won't see it on their skin. It's the absolute opposite. We burn. We scar. We bruise like really quickly, and it's you know, it's uh, white Caucasian skin. The scars cover up our skin, no, and we can keloid. Yeah, yeah, this is true. This yeah. is true. Well, I I can't wait to try it for my all mankind when I hit back stateside, which is very soon. Thank what you. tips would you like? To, can I have like? You're under the lights, you're in makeup every day. What tips can you give to me? They gotta give me something. Okay, so here's the thing. I cannot yeah. tell you anything <laughs> about looking, 50 looking like that, okay? I can't tell you anything. What I can do is listen to you um, and probably still, you know, round it off by telling you again, damn, like you're, you know, you 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 are still stunning. Like, and still is not like a fun word for for most people. But I think for those who really understand and don't take anything for granted, still is amazing. And you still like you you, you still look amazing. Like you still, I mean, um, aside from COVID, like walking on a show, like you still crush. Everyone there, oh, you still, and you still, and you your own walk. You got your own walk. Like B was quoting you your walk. Like I'm I mean, you're. I'm completely in the clouds when I walk. I don't see anybody. I don't. I just see a light. That's all I see. I don't see anybody. I don't hear anything. It's like I just see this tunnel, and that's, <laughs> and that's it. Crazy. Now, Pharrell, it's amazing. You then decided to be in movie producer. I mean, you've done, you were up for Oscars, you've done scores for countless of amazing, epic movies. And then you now have done sc scores for your own movies that you've produced. It's incredible. What was it like with working with Taraji, Octavia and Janelle? How was that set? That was beautiful. Um, those are really, really, really talented actresses. 
Well, you know, they are amazing, amazing black actors. I know that sometimes yeah. they don't like to um, change it, right? They're amazing black actors. Um, and they just came with a, a vibration that was very similar to what we suspect the energy was with the original quote unquote colored computers, you know, Mary Jackson and Katherine Johnson. Um, you know, and then all of this happened in Virginia. So for us, it was like, it was like a dream come true to have you know a cast like that um, just be so good and help to help us tell this story that that blends black women, you know, the, the and their talent, their brilliance on a big screen, and including NASA, you know, and back in the mm -hmm. '60s and the civil rights days, it's like that was that was that was a dream project. We're very grateful for that opportunity. Thank you to- We needed uh, to know July. that story. We needed to know yeah. it because so many of us didn't. Now, are you got any more things in your pocket? Because I I mean, working with wonderful Mimi Valdez, I love Mimi. I love that mm -hmm. you keep your people yeah, from amazing. back in the day still with you. I love that. That's loyalty. Thank you. And that's true friendship. Thank you. I mean, do you Thank have, you. what's more, I read that you have something else you're working on that seems to be all these great true stories that we need to know because right now this time is a very time of a divide that needs to go into the positive. And these stories, knowing these stories are very important since we're not being educated about them. This is the only way we're going to know them through storytelling. It's an amazing time to tell stories. Um, I think America is listening. Um, mm -hmm. I think our people are listening and there are people who don't want to listen and don't want to, you know, acknowledge, um, but they're starting to seem like there are more people who want to listen and more people who want to take action and, um, and unify, you know, fix, educate, enlighten, and then maybe unify like that. It's a, it feels more like that every day. So what's anything that you can tell us that you have working on that's coming up, film-wise? Uh, there shows? are some, but I, I, yes. Well, there's uh, Voices of Fire. No, 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 well, there's some that I can't talk about, but that we're, you know, we're, we're like working tell on. Tell us the ones day. you can talk about. But then, um, well, this bit right on Netflix right now is a series of a music bio doc called Voices of Fire. It's based on my uncle's uh, choir and him putting one together. And there's some really amazing stories in there because uh, mm -hmm. it's all based on the process of putting together a choir in Hampton Roads. So they have like, you know, about 60 odd members. Um, but it's story after story. You see why these people are like unicorns and why they sound the way they do. Um, that's been. And this is your you know, uncle's choir? A, yeah, this is my uncle's choir, Ezekiel Williams, Bishop Ezekiel Williams. And was it, so it's in a, so they sang in a church? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's called Voices that, of Fire. I mean, I love to hear that. I will watch yeah, Voices of is, Fire. I mean, yeah. there's something no, it's, that it's, when it's you amazing. go and hear these choirs, it just touches right to your, it's either you cry, but it, it definitely hits something down in your heart it gets it, it gets to some string for me always yeah they're good like that they 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 have it we're working on their album right now and it's pretty fantastic crazy. you are a papa to four angels yeah yeah how is being a father and juggling all of what you do what's that like it's been interesting it's it's like Beautif beautifully intense and intensely and intensely beautiful all at once <laughs> it just is it's, it's like never a dull moment and i'm full on like dad full on dad it's crazy and the yeah. day in the life the day in the life of um of pharrell it's like um work and dad work and dad yeah, and tell me, just to end off, in these times that we're in, I mean, you've been vocal, obviously, for the culture. 
what do you feel we're going to go from here? Because this is a very important time in history, I think. Very. It's a defining time for us, for our culture. Yeah. I think there's a lot of work. I think there's a lot of work that's ha that has to be done on ourselves and our communities, our cities, and we have to find our rhythm. You know, we got to find our rhythm for what's going to work and what's going to sustain. And it's like, if you're always looking out for, for other people, then you're going to have a community that works out. And if you're thinking about yourself, there's going to be a lot of, you know, um, dissension. There'll be a lot of like divisiveness in the air. And that's what we're, that's what we're seeing right now. You know, the other thing is that, um, you know, you know, a lot of people are waiting for things to go back to the way that it used to be. And that's never going to happen. You know, there's never been a time in history where things go backwards. Right. Mm -hmm. Just doesn't happen. I don't want them the, to. The, I'm looking earth. forward to this. Whatever yeah, this man, is. the earth turns around a thousand miles per hour. Like it's never gone the other way. It just doesn't happen. So we have to look at what we're really dealing with right now, what our real reality is, and, and ask ourselves and embrace. what we need to embrace. can we be doing? Yeah, yeah. I know embrace. that sounds all kumbaya, but I'm just telling you. No, it's I know. Like we need I hear that. you. But it's not all kumbaya. It's how you feel. And I, so many people around the world will agree with what you have to say. I think when you fight against yeah. the flow, it's not the natural way. You have to go with it. There is a reason that mm -hmm. this is happening. We will understand yeah. it soon. Yeah. For God now, is the greatest. God is the greatest. It is. He is. Have you seen my brother? Have you seen him? Saying that line, God is the greatest. Um, I, I, yeah, he is. He is. Uh, he is the best. So my puff. Yeah. That's my. Yeah, that's my brother. Boy, brother, brother, good brother. Guy. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for your time. I know you were up in the studio all night, and thank you so much for doing this today. It really means a lot to me and to everyone watching and to hear your story, your journey, and your wisdom, and to know how to keep your face looking beautiful. <laughs> thank and you, and uh, so thank you for you. everything that I've learned. No, so happy to see you, and thank you for all the stuff that I've, that you've taught me, and the things I were like, I was like, you know, lucky enough to learn from you. You're definitely a force, and, uh, there will never be another one like you, ever. Oh, bless you. You know, you. like you're. I love you so much, and I'm so grateful to you. you proud of you. Keep rising. Keep shining. Keep educating our minds. Thank you. Music on every day. Thank you. Love you. Love Thank you. you. Have a blessed love day, you too. Be blessed. Pharrell Williams. I mean. So calm, so eloquent. He's a legend. And everything he touches just works. And that's because he said something very key. He enjoys the process. So it's not rushing. He wants to get it right and accurate. Very important points to live by. That's why he is who he is. I hope you will like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I will see you again next week. Until then, I'm saying, Brown Girls out for my last show in Lagos, Nigeria.